gather round me, children, I'll tell you the news. Don't worry about the names or dates, you already know it's true. The doctor hates your baby, the prime minister's a ghost. And all them folks are sailing here, cause they're in love with bows. Superfoods can save us from all our evil sin. JFK and Elvis own a bar in Wisconsin. Vaccinations were created by the CIA to steal votes from Bernie Sanders and turn your babies gay. So click the link you think you like and get tooled for a fight against those lefty fascist communists who are leaning too far right. Hi and welcome to not another fake newscast. I'm Paul. And I'm Jerry. So today we've got um, some very special guests in our interview here. We've got uh, authors of a book about Donald Trump. Yeah, it's called Don't Grab My Pussy. And we are here with uh, the author and artist uh, Julia Young and Matt Harkins, who uh, has, I believe has provided all the artwork for the book. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I work with, uh, I didn't actually make it, but I run a gallery and I work with an artist named Laura Collins who made original pieces for every rhyme in the book. Mm-hmm. And Matt and I wrote it together. Although I will say, I probably wrote maybe 55% and he did 45 if we're going to be completely honest. Oh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, you know, you make sure you get that extra 5% cut, Julia. Yeah. Oh, I already have. Do not worry. <laughs> Very specific contract. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, don't, so, don't, be, don't be giving Jerry any ideas because if not, I'm going to be done out of money for this show. That's <laughs> not, not what we want at all. <laughs> I'm going to be taking. I'm going to be taking note from now on exactly what percentage <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm contributing here. Maybe we just split it down the middle and like one of you works with Julia and then I'll go. I'll go to Scotland. I'll be on, I'll be on podcast. We could just start a whole new like turn over a new leaf here. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, okay. I want to work with Julia. I want to be on team fifty five percent personally. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the money for you, Jerry. <laughs> so, uh, so like uh, a little bit of background on on you guys. So, I've uh, looking looking at, at Julia. You've been you've worked as a comedy writer, stand up comic. You've been on uh, MTV's Wild and Out. Uh, you know ha, what? What else have you done, and what, and what kind of brought you to to getting involved in the book? So yeah, I've been a freelance comedy writer and performer for about eight years now and yeah I've worked on a variety of MTV shows true TV shows all different kinds of stuff and um, I actually met Matt maybe about five years ago we were both doing improv comedy together and we just immediately um, fell in like platonic love I guess would you say yeah, lust, lust or love lust is higher lust, I'm yeah. lust, yeah. lust. And, platonic lust yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite and, yeah, uh-huh. it's, it's really um, productive. And so um, I guess, you know, we've been doing a lot of projects. And then after Trump won the election, obviously, like everybody else, I was plunged into an immediate depression. Um, <laughs> and obviously after, you know, the pussy tape came out, I just thought, you know, please don't grab my pussy. That kind of stuck in my head. And I said, that would be a good kind of fake kids book. So I asked Matt to uh, write it with me. And Matt runs a pop culture museum, so he had a connection with some artists, and he brought Laura into the into the fold. And then we just spent a lot of time coming up with um, a lot of different words for vagina. Yeah. So, so the the pop culture museum that's this it's a think think nineteen ninety four museum that that you are involved in, Matt. Yeah, it's THNK nineteen ninety four. It's uh, started as the Tanya Harding Nancy Kerrigan nineteen ninety four museum. But we've done a bunch of different uh, exhibits since then. Olsen Twins Hiding from the Paparazzi, that was a show of Laura's. We did a tribute to Tiffany Pollard, who I don't know if she's uh, – she was on Big Brother UK. She's the one who thought that David Bowie had died uh, or that David Guest had died when it was actually David Bowie because David Guest was in the Big Brother house. It's iconic. Yeah. So so we did a whole exhibit about those seven minutes when she was under the impression David Guest had died in the Big Brother house. (laughs) Um, and so, yeah, we do a lot of different, they range in topics, but Laura is one of the artists we work with. She's so talented. Uh, and so I wanted to work with her on this. Yeah. And it was great. Cause we would just come up with a rhyme for the book and then immediately just describe what we wanted her to paint. It's all acrylic, um, paints. So we would just describe what we wanted and she would do it for us and send us the image and it would be perfect. 
I mean, she is an incredibly talented artist. The, the artwork on this book is definitely something to behold. So. Yeah, totally. That's what I love about her her work is like, especially like working with 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 us on the book. Like the rhymes are so weird, <laughs> and then uh, some of the paintings are so specific. Uh, like there's one about you know a college uh, girl going missing on a cruise, uh, which is the narrator of the book. Uh, that's something that happened in her past. Uh, so I thought it was, it's just great. You know, it's like, you'd never find a painting like these, like these anywhere, especially the one of Mike Pence with his horses that he gets weird with. <laughs> um, that we're, was we're, personal thing. Sorry, but we were talking about that story before, uh, just before he came on. Um, does Mike Pence sleep standing up? Because uh, I'm quite interested to see oh, yeah. that. Absolutely, he I, does. I well, think. Alleg- I mean, we think he does. Oh, yeah, allegedly. Well, we don't we know for sure. I've never been in the Pence household, Sorry. but I have seen his tweets. He, he very much tweets about his love of horses and how he loves them between his legs, and he just loves horses. He loves horses, I think, in a more sexual way than he loves women. He's very into, he's, he's, he tweeted this thing a while ago, it was like a Ronald Reagan quote or something, which like, of course, and then it was like, a, but it was about horses and it was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Like, it was like, what are you trying to say you do with these horses, man? Like, that's like weird. Uh, and then, <laughs> I didn't know it. Like, yeah. so passionate. Oh no, it's the weirdest thing. Like when people joke that he's gay, he's not gay. He hates gay people, you yeah. know, that's like a proven fact. And sure. he would love for there to be no gay people, but he obviously loves horses in yeah. a way that's just weird. Yeah. Um, but- Yes, but as we, long we, as it's we, female we, horses, as long as it's only female horses, because then no. it would be gay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't even come to him with a, a male horse. What's a male horse? A mare? <laughs> Dag? No. Stallion? Stallion. Yeah, yeah, we'll go yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, so we don't know for sure that he, that he sleeps upright with horses, but he's, we know that he anyway, turns like sorry, a Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you suggesting, Jerry, that there's no sleeping involved with horses? Is 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 that what you're suggesting? No sleep till climax. Oh, that's a fair rule. It's a fair rule. That's how I. That's how I spend my time with horses. Uh, so, so, uh, so h- how long? How long did it take you guys to sort of put the book together from start to finish? Um, it was over a year. Um, just the entire process. Writing it didn't take us that long. It was maybe a few months of work. Not consistent, obviously, but just meeting up for a few hours, working on it, and then it was. Um, a bit of a process finding a publisher. And then once we did, we, um, you know, locked in everything and then started working with the artist to get the paintings. So, yeah, I think we, I probably conceived of this idea maybe a year and a half ago. And it's finally hitting shelves in October, October 30th, which is so crazy. You excited to, to, to see it go out there? Yeah, it's like kind of mind blowing to think like we are authors. We wrote a book like it's it's crazy and it's so exciting to see our names on the book and it's real it has a barcode you know and it's a simple read and that's i think what we're capable of (laughs) we're not very smart yeah we can provide people a very easy breezy simple read with some fun different words for you know vagina you can say the word matt for pussy or say vagina oh vagina or carly simon cassette which is in the book that's a gorgeous phrase yeah it is everybody loves carly simon yeah and everyone loves cassettes yeah Yeah. do you do you have a favorite, like, do you have a, a favorite prose? Will, will it be, like, do you have a favorite page, essentially, of all the different pages? Like, what is your favorite pussy rhyme? Um, I have a personal favorite. Is it the Mike Pence one? No, okay. this one is, I'll read it for you real quick. Uh, you could grab a meal at Mar-a-Lago. My steak was unsatisfactory. It tasted like how being screamed at by Don Jr. feels, but please don't grab my yogurt factory. <laughs> and you imagine that Don Jr. just screams at everyone all day long, the rage that's inside of him. So uh, that one I feel is a very true one. Can, can, um, I, read my, can I read my favorite? Please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, my favorite was uh, you can grab an electoral map of your victory. Yes, we all know you won North Carolina. Talk about states I'll never set foot in, but please don't grab my vagina. That was my yeah. that was my personal favorite. That's a keep it simple one. You yeah, know? it's classic. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just mm-hmm. go for vagina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to get all the, the 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 normal words and then the weird and then the made up ones. Yeah, you know, we just wanted to make everyone as uncomfortable as possible. I think was the goal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what I was mean, your? For, I mean, for me, my favorite page is the one that underlines that you know for fact that there's a P tape. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, the narrator does know for a fact. The narrator knows. If the CIA would like to contact the narrator, we could probably put them in touch. Yes. Uh, but we just have to, you know, make sure that she's okay with it. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but she knows. There's a PT. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would... <laughs> Our podcast would very much like to see that PT, but we can contact the narrator uh, because we could. Uh, not not for any you, kind of sexual really, purposes. I'd like to underline that. No, 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 not because I really want to see it, like from to get kicks out of it. But you know, like we're not, we're not in the US. We're not really bound by not putting that piece of information out to the public. Well, we can absolutely send you a PT. Yeah, I mean, we'll send you whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of props and yeah. costumes involved. And a lot of time. Yes. So I think if, if, you're, if you're in the market, you know, we can talk later. We, do we work with that right now? You sure. Know? <laughs> Tell us what you need specifically. Yeah, we'll get, get hydrated. Time. We'll yeah. get this done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is quite the offer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're all I think about, it's what it is. We're all about building relationships between countries. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> then limiting them. We get that style. Yeah. <laughs> Team. Yeah, you have a bit. Of, you have a bit of a diplomacy deficit at the moment, so you guys have to do your bit, right? We do. People are literally laughing at us. Yeah, so. it falls on our shoulders. Yes. Uh, cool. So, so like, uh, you know, going forward when the book gets out there and stuff, what, what are you? What kind of reaction are you hoping for? Do you, do you think that this is gonna? You think this is gonna change anything, or or or, or just you know just sort of help to to ridicule Donald in, in the manner that he he requires? I'm hoping that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that Democrats love it and buy many copies for their Democratic children. And then I'm hoping Republicans get mad and make it other people buy copies of it. Like, it's, buy copies and then burn it, possibly. I mean, they do like burning things. Love it. I love when Republicans burn things they've already bought. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things to happen. Um yeah, I, I definitely, I think it's just, um, you know, we envision this as kind of like a, like a go the fuck to sleep book where it's just clearly for adults, but marketed towards children. And yeah, we want people to think it's funny and to get a kick out of it. It's very campy. It's very weird and very pop culture, which is what we're obsessed with. Yeah. And I think like, uh, I don't think we're going to change anybody's minds for sure. Like what Julia was saying, but like, I definitely think like, I, like at least the take a bit of, uh, not treating it so seriously in the sense of like, you know, the, the narrator's just like the one who's like saying all these different words for a vagina, you know, it's like making it more of just like, uh, let's ease, like, you know. Yeah, like Trump's a joke. Yeah. This book is a joke. He's a total joke. And like, and, but what he said was really serious. I mean, he did admit to sexual assault. So I think we're also very much, their message is also like, don't, don't touch women, like enough already. So I think there is a, underlying message without being too ham-fisted of like just don't you there are other things you can grab because you clearly don't know um like what no means yeah i mean right now in the current climate in the u.s um you probably couldn't have chose a better time for you to be releasing such a book with uh, the yeah. current president defending kavanaugh and the likes it's uh yeah yeah i mean it's a really good time for the book it's so dark, it's depressing, and it's like, uh, you know, I mean, like we said, like, it's like the, the tape itself, like, didn't even get in anybody's mind, really, and so, like, uh, and then seeing this now, it's sort of like a, the same thing over and over again, but it's just one of those things where it's like, all you do is, like, hope that, like, uh, this, you know, people learn from the past and, like, try and, like, make sure that sh- shit doesn't happen again, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's terribly, it's like, everything that's happening in the news is awful and triggering, and it's just men saying things and not believing women. So I think if, I think if we can give a moment of levity or, you know, even we can mansplain with this book. Or yeah. And even having the book, just like the book, I feel it has like a, a little bit of a nasty tone to it, which I think is fair. You know, yeah. it's like you watch any of these, anything that happens and it just enrages you to the point where you just want all these guys to choke, you know, uh, <laughs> like by, by end of day. Um, and if that, you don't get that experience, you don't get to see that happen. So then, uh, that's why I think like, you know, it's, the, the, <laughs> the book can come off a little bit on the nasty side, but it's like, yeah, that all that rage and shit, it's all packed in there. Yeah. Uh, because of, you know, just like, you don't get any release. It's like nonstop each day. And then it just seems to get worse and worse. And it's like, well, what, you know, where's the release come from? But you know, that's just, it's just a shitty time. It is. 
Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, it's righteous anger. It. It's righteous anger, and I think like uh, you know, it's a message worth repeating until it finally sinks into people. Eh? Like you know, there are certain men out there that need to realise that they can't just grab what whatever they want whenever they feel like it. Mm-hmm. It turns out most of them are in <laughs> working for Mr. Trump at the present moment. Um, on the upside, you've also gave people a reference book for the midterms when they're making campaign posters, which is another which is another good thing. You know, I mean, it's another another bonus that people have got. There's yeah. a lot of catchy rhymes that they can put on put on uh, boards and 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 take them to campaign rallies and st- and such like. Yeah, yes. feel free to use any rhymes from there. Yes, yeah. we would love to see these images and words blown up and anything bigger. We like big things. We love big yeah. things. <laughs> We're small things. Yeah, we like things. I like miniature things. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> <laughs> what about like mushroom headed things uh, like mushrooms like, Jenny, yeah. think, you know, you're obviously talking about yeah, well, yeah. No, 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 dude, you Wonder. know what I'm talking about Stormy Daniels described uh, Trump's oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no I mean obviously he has a terrible looking penis yeah he's a terrible looking person you can tell someone no has a handsome to penis anybody. He, doesn't, he, will, he would never have a handsome penis yeah it's like red oh like yeah a red rocket yeah, like a like a baby carrot that's been left in the fridge for like like three months. Yeah, <laughs> some fingernails on it. Yeah, no, I think about that way too much. <laughs> disgusting, disgusting penis. I love Stormy Daniels, by the way. Oh, she's great. She should do the audio book of this. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure she's very busy. I don't think we could probably even afford her. <laughs> we should get a Stormy Daniels impersonator. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's iconic. Yeah, she is. And you could probably find someone that sounds like Stormy Daniels quite easily, to be honest. It's, yeah, I mean, Matt, you put on a blonde wig, you're Stormy. Oh my god, okay, wow, I guess I didn't realize this would be um, my breakout. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. Well, to be honest, that was going to be one of the caveats for the P video anyway, so you'll get practice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good, yeah. I'll make sure, I would have practiced anyway, Yeah. but now I'll really make sure to practice beforehand. <laughs> Because I, you know, I believe in putting my best foot forward. <laughs> I don't know where this tape is going, but I want to make sure it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So like, always, uh, always aim for a good P tape. Oh, no, yeah, always aim for a good one. Always yeah. aim. Aim for a hundred. You know, yeah. reach, reach for the stars. Mm-hmm. And if you fail, you'll land in a puddle of pee. Yeah. It'll taste delicious. <laughs> So, so uh, the publishers, <laughs> Animal House, then were they were they good people to work with? <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing? Yeah, you probably have, yeah, you probably have to ask that question to each other because so, sorry. <laughs> everybody, was, everybody was thinking about being in a puddle of pee. Um, my, uh, my fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the eye count going. <laughs> yeah, I was just asking, uh, like the publishers, Animal House. Did you find? Did you find them? They were good to work with. Like, do they do other other uh, kind of books that are similar to this? Well, they, they definitely focus on, like, humor uh, in general, and so that's kind of how we found them, I think. Yeah, I, I, I had a friend or a, an acquaintance who had her book published by them, so I just reached out. I reached out to a few publishers, and no one was interested, so kind of as a last effort, I was like, you know, maybe I'll just self-publish it, but let me send one more email, and Animal responded, and they've been amazing, like, because they're smaller, they just, they have, like, a lot of time for all of their authors, and so everything we wanted they were like sure like we trust you we believe in you they they didn't push back on things you know we we had ideas about what certain paintings should look like and they were like okay yeah that makes sense like they 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 thought we were funny and then they you know let us run with it so that was a very very positive experience working with them I like how that story started off with you've got a friend that had to publish and then that friend became an acquaintance in the same yeah. sentence. I have a friend, not, not really a friend, more of like a person I know. I realize now that I've never met her and I had emailed her about her publishing. <laughs> so I didn't want her to think that like um, that I owe her anything because I absolutely do not. <laughs> <laughs> Go put your back. Uh, like- but yeah, like that's it's great that it gave you that artistic freedom to just kind of do what you want and and let you run with it. And that's like what that's what every artist is looking for, I guess. Eh? Yeah, and yeah, totally. we were so lucky that they wanted to publish it. You know, I think a lot of people want books published, and it doesn't happen. So we're really really thrilled that it's a real book. Yeah. So will the plan be, and in, in the event that is obvious success with this book, is the plan? 
to use the fact that you've got President Trump giving you endless amounts of material to be putting out another book, something in the same vein, or is this is a one-off? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, we'll see. Uh, we're sort of just figuring out uh, this this one, but like, absolutely, like we do. Uh, yeah, we could I mean, do the another book called "I Told You the Beat Tape Was Real." Yeah, you know? and then, yeah, I could start that finally. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then there's we could do like uh, you know, there's, there's a ton of opportunities. Love to you know explore the Mike Pence and horse relationship. Yeah, or Melania um, and divorce relationship. Yeah, a lot yeah. of different things. <laughs> Melania and the fact that she's been replaced by somebody else in from time to time. A clone, yeah. Oh, I am such a believer. Oh, her body double yes. I, with that lady. I forget. Yeah, there, there was like a Felania. rumor of what her name was. Oh, really? Uh, but I forget what it was. But yeah, I mean, absolutely, I believe it. I believe it. I yeah. think. I think she. The only way she can stay is if she leaves sometimes. You know, to swap body swap. Yeah, and probably do other heinous things. She herself is also a bad person. Um, well, not worse than Trump. Not worse, but I mean, I don't have. I think. I, I mean, mean, the jacket she wore bad. was insane. Yeah, yeah, that was insane. It was really, really poor taste. It's like not what? a mistake you can make. I mean, no. I like, unless she doesn't read. I mean, but like that, it's like yeah. You have a team also, hopefully, of yeah. being like, um, excuse me, first lady, don't wear that. <laughs> She's an active choice. Yes, completely. Oh, definitely. I mean, she speaks five languages or something like that. She's not stupid. I mean, she's yeah. maybe not the brightest, but she's not stupid. Like, and she she must have been aware that it would be frowned upon. Yeah, she she had to know. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. Everything you do is interpreted. I mean, Obama got unless yeah, you got so much shit for wearing like a tan suit. You know, like how you do the only it? thing. I mean, it's so clearly a choice. Unless she was in a Mentos commercial and sat on like a fucking <laughs> like, a wet paint bench or whatever, and I was like, oh, oops. And then it just like works out that she like reaches out to his like fan base. Do you guys know that way. commercial? It's like a it's like a famous old Mentos commercial. No, no, I don't I think we have that. No, I can't, I can't place it, but uh, I'll take your word for it. You guys wearing a suit and he sits on a bench that has wet paint and then the back of his suit is pinstripe and then he's like, oh shoot, what do I do? Because he's a job interview. Yeah, and so he takes a Mentos and he gets the idea to roll around on the bench and then when he gets up, he's wearing a full pinstripe suit. So you make the best out of a bad situation with Mentos. That's what Mentos is about. And Matt decided to reference this <laughs> yeah. commercial from 1993. Oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> it really, it, it does stand the test of time. It's great. Yeah, just to show you're down with the kids. <laughs> That's really, on, on, got your finger on the pulse of current pop culture. Well, yeah. you know what kids love? They love Mentos. Um, <laughs> they really do. Yeah, yeah. And crack. Yeah. <laughs> Mental. Opiates in general. I believe opiates in general these days are big for everyone, kids, adults alike. Yeah, people love opiates. Do they like them there as well, or is that just a across the pond thing? Yeah, so I'd say it's it's not quite as bad in the UK as it is in America, but it's certainly it it it's kind of bad over here, but not like America bad. Like I mean, everyone in America likes that sweet sweet hillbilly crack. They love that shit over there. So. Oh, maybe it's cause, maybe because it's bad. You don't have Kellyanne Conway as your opiate czar. What? Yeah, that's what her title is, the opiate czar, like C Z A R. It's like no, what I the know what a czar fuck is. are you talking about? And I think she once maybe she maybe she logged onto her computer and like took an image of like a catchphrase and put it on a poster or something. I don't know. She didn't do anything. She's not doing anything. She just wants them all to die. <laughs> Oh my God. I quite like the title of Opiate Czar. That's like quite, like quite a nice title. Like, uh, makes you sound like a bad guy. Yeah, I know. I mean, she's a bad guy. I'm sure, they love like the uh, the uh, the Czar thing put in there. To be honest, that is that would be kind of fun to be a Czar of something. You need to cool it, yeah. man. <laughs> um, yeah. To be honest, I think it's probably because you're allowed to advertise uh, prescription medication on TV in America. You're not allowed to do that in the UK. Like, we're not allowed to. Are you not allowed to? No, no, we're not allowed to like turn on the TV and be advertised drugs that have got side effects like death. They're just not allowed to do that in the TV over here. It's completely banned. So yeah, we, we don't get we don't get bombarded with them. So um, how do you find out about Botox? Well, generally like, speaking, we... I don't get Botox. So it does, but maybe that's because it's not being advertised to me. And saying that, that's probably the reason I don't have Botox. Um, <laughs> 
I, I think we I think we have a slightly different healthcare model. We're also not allowed to just let people die because they don't have insurance. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got we've got what we call a healthcare model as opposed to a different healthcare model, which yeah. is a, yeah. It's, are bad. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We love um, people dying because they had a heart attack and couldn't afford to pay the bill. So, you know, it's just like what we do. It's like America's great, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're making it great again. That's that's the good thing. Thank you. Thank oh, yeah. You. More czars. Different things. <laughs> more czars. Drain the swamp. Yeah. Right. So, yeah we should, there should be more like czars, barons, like maybe a kick ass duke. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like the name of all Trump's children. Yeah, like Czar, yeah. Baron, Kickass Duke. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Uh, so, where where can our listeners get a hold of uh, of of your book? Um, they can buy it on the AnimalMedia.com website. Uh, and then it'll be for sale um, on October thirtieth on Amazon. I believe Barnes and Noble. Yeah. You just just Google. Please don't grab my pussy and don't look at images. Um, but but <laughs> um, it will come off. Yeah. Um, and then we're hoping to get into like fun local bookstores. Um, so you can pick it up in person. Yeah. And honestly, we will fly to the UK and uh, force local book merchants. Is that what you call them? To, yeah. to stop our book. That's what we call them from now on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> book merchants. Yeah. It's very quaint. Everybody who said we call everybody who sells anything a merchant here. We have cheese merchants. We have like curtain merchants, bed merchants. That's just how we do. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> they call politicians Brexit merchants, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Loosely, yeah. I mean, loosely, that would insinuate that they're selling something. I mean, uh, those, lie merchants, uh, mainly lie, lie merchants. merchants. Yeah, yeah, yes. Peddlers of untruths. Ooh, peddlers. I'd buy a bed, a mattress from a bed merchant in a stack and more than like, we have like a mattress firm here. <laughs> We're like a, like a sleepy, but a bed merchant. That sounds yeah, fancy. Yeah, it sounds romantic. Yeah. Like it's stuffed with feathers or something. Can, can, can you not get sponsored by like Casper or something now? You've now got a book out. Do you just not get free mattresses sent to you? I understand that people who are involved in podcasts in America get free mattresses sent to them all the time. You well, should be. You should be. The world is such a scam world to begin with. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> start I agree. Mattress is the same. It's like whatever. Well, no. I, I honestly like my my goal in life is to become an influencer and to be sent free things. And I'm like, don't know why it hasn't happened yet <laughs> because like I deserve it and I have enough <laughs> media followers. You know. So You're not I, taking enough pictures of yourself drinking Cristal with a fancy watch on on a yacht. I believe that's that's one of the big things you have to be doing to be an influencer. I'm, not doing that. I'm absolutely not doing that. I mean, I mean, clearly I'm doing it wrong. Um, but yeah, we would love to be sent free things by companies and then give like a very like fun caption that seems like it's not sponsored, but it's really sponsored. You know, I think yeah. we'd be good at that. Let's put that energy out. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's put that mattress energy out. Yeah. Yeah. Cost- <laughs> Fucking mattresses everywhere. I want a mattress in every room. A free mattress oh, yeah. in every room. Hell you know, you yeah. You just like roll around and you're not going to get hurt. I would love that. I'd love to just mattress out my uh, home. <laughs> yeah. And it means the when you get drunk, you can just sleep wherever you fall, which is another bonus. <laughs> Yeah, you can just and, scream into it when you read the news. I'll get friends who all have like balance issues. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let's be honest, the world needs more celebrity endorsements. There's not enough of that. Oh my god, you think we're celebrities? Thank you so much. So we need to get you over here when the book when the book comes out, so you can do a book signing in like London. That's what people do, right? That's that's what, that's what people do when they release that's books. Right. They yeah, yeah Shakespeare did that. We should do it. Yeah. Jake, all yeah. the big three. Yeah. yeah. The big three. The big three. Matt, Julia, and Shakespeare. That's yeah. Never a true word to spoken. <laughs> yeah. That no, it absolutely makes sense. It's very on brand. Um, it's yeah. very on Russell Brand. No. <laughs> We should come to London, right, Matt? Yeah, we're ready. We're so ready. I have a, a really cute suitcase I could bring. Yeah, let's do it. Can we stay with you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't live in London. I've never been to London. I used to work a fair bit in London, but we're actually we're actually quite a distance from London. We're near Edinburgh, though, so you can come for the Fringe. And you can go oh, to, like, yeah, you, could, you can stay with us if you go to the fringe. Well, yeah, I'm sure you have like friends in London who have flats that would love to like let us into their flats, probably. <laughs> so I'm sure. Especially if you bring all those mattresses. Yes, we <laughs> travel oh. with our mattresses on the plane. Gonna invoice for the shipping. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, but see, this is this is why we need a fucking mattress sponsor right now because there's like supposedly the mattresses come in really small boxes and then they open up really big. I could sell one of these mattresses right now if we had a sponsor. We need yeah. a sponsor for this show. All right, I'm not getting off this computer until we have a fucking natural <laughs> sponsor. <laughs> Honestly, I have a cast and I really like it. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. I do. I do have a cast. Right. <laughs> it explodes. You you cut open the packaging and it explodes into a full size mattress. It's very cool. Yeah. Great. That's that's what I've been told as well. Like it comes in a very small box, and then when you open it up, it expands massively, and it's. Uh, very- it sounds like Al Qaeda could really put that to use. Anyone can, yeah. <laughs> it does have a strong chemical smell. <laughs> Much uh, like Al Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> it does have a strong chemical smell. Does Ca- do Casper mattresses smell like chemicals? Because this is not a really good steel point. They're really not going to give us the mattress. Like, I take it back, I take it back, I take it back. Well, it's just it like a day. It's like, like, who doesn't smell like chemicals for a day? Yeah, you know? it's totally understandable. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah, love it. I love it. We love it. it. We I love chemicals. The bottle, it's great on me. Chemtrails. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Matt, really. we, for fuck's sake, Matt, we've only marketed these things for two minutes and you've already said they smell like chemicals. This is why you this is why you don't have sponsors. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is why yeah, this is why you don't get Casper sponsors. <laughs> so the midterms are coming up. Where what do you what do you see is happening in the United States? You're obviously now technically political commenters. Oh my god. Because you've got a book that does that, so that's now your that's now your bread and butter, if you will. Yeah. So what do you see happening in the next day uh, in, in, in the by election coming up? Like, you're obviously there. So, in the midterm, sorry. So, you're already there. What, what, what's, the, what's the feeling in America, do you think? Well, I think a lot of people think that there's going to be this blue wave and all these Democrats are going to get elected and take over the House. But I, I don't know. I, I hate to believe that because, you know, we all thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. That's what all the polls said. So, I think it's just. A mistake to get too optimistic, you know, and to even read polls or listen to that because, yeah, we all woke up stunned after he won. So, but I, I do think more people, younger people are like registering to vote. I think turnout will be a lot higher for young people, for Democrats, hopefully. Um, but yeah, things need to change because we like America has been living a nightmare for two years. Yeah, it needs to end. And yeah, I mean, just hopefully it'll start from like the smallest point where that seems to be where there's like the best candidates on the like Democratic side of like the lowest levels, but like they're they're actually you know uh, standing like for something and like uh, they um, are people that can yeah they're way more progressive as they should be and they're it's giving people something to like get actually excited about as opposed to the you know like total duds that are like uh like i mean like i don't know like like joe biden i'm like okay yeah i mean you need, you need candidates to get excited about yeah and that's like why beto is so big right now that's why obama was so big because it's like oh this person's charismatic they're kind they don't have any skeletons in their closet where they attempted to rape a woman and they're young also which is a big thing where we're represented by like a bunch of 70 year old white dudes and that's not what this country is so I'm hoping yeah. for a huge blue wave, but I don't want to hold my breath and be like devastated again because I can't afford that much therapy. You know? <laughs> I guess the one positive about having a character like Trump in the White House is that it's a sort of it's a sort of thing that might galvanize a movement against him. You know, he's he's such a he's such a a hateful character that it might actually cause there to be a movement uh, against him and it, it kind of galvanizes people brings them together uh whereas the left the left certainly in the uk it looks like the us has been quite splintered over the past wee while so uh perhaps there might be a bit of a movement and it, it, it might unify people against trump i really hope so do you guys know there that like we don't like we don't like him like this isn't a reflection on us you know what i mean like are we still okay? i mean like it's generally accepted like so it's weird that says because of what we do, we find ourselves in arguments with various various people from America throughout the so from from different uh, walks of life and different um, political ideas. And um, sometimes people will argue with us quite frequently that uh, everybody in America loves Trump and that he is a, a prime example of someone who is genuinely making the country a better place. And people feel like they're empowered and like i mean to be honest the people who usually put forward that argument are quite racist um usually white and usually male um 
very rarely do you find like a, a black female arguing that she's really anti Trump. You know what I mean? So um, very, very rarely do you find someone who can who can spell properly and has good grammar uh, defending them. Also, that I've noticed that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that he represents a, a part of this country for sure. Like, and what is exactly who you described, just racist, uh, like, uh, people who live here and who are uh, uh, absolutely, I feel like, energized by him. I and mean, it's not like they weren't here before, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, they, he gives them uh, a megaphone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's not totally off base that like he's like uh, like any is like any different or or is like wasn't here before you know yeah. all that was totally here before he's just thinking it louder and louder and I think I mean we live in New York so we also have we live in a I think a great bubble in terms of it being multicultural and diverse and so I don't really know like people who voted for Trump I mean I went on like one date with a guy who worked in the Trump administration and I was so shocked that after I went home with them, I left, you know? So I think that, like... <laughs> <laughs> You're so shocked. After you went home with them, you left, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. Was, well, you've been that shocked. Well, like, I had to see... What- you're, an, you're an empowered woman. You can do what you want. Thank you. Um, you, need, you need a balance from both sides, I suppose. You know, you need, like, how do you know you don't like racists until you've tried a racist? Yeah, you don't want to be in some sort of sexual echo chamber. <laughs> No, no, he was a monster. I, um, <laughs> yeah, a monster. No, but, but I think, you know, it, it, it's like so insane to me that I could even interact with a, a Trump supporter um, because I just look around in New York and everyone's so different and for the most part getting along. <laughs> and so the idea that like, I, I think a, a lot of its voters and supporters are used to just seeing like white faces all the time, white Christian faces. And just believe he's going to protect them from the horrors of diversity, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, in answer to your question, we are pretty aware over here that he's, I mean, essentially one of the least popular presidents in his first term ever, uh, and also, like, they lost the popular vote, so the majority of people they didn't vote for him, you know. I mean, he just he just won he won the electoral colleges, and that's how he got in. Uh, but I mean, we've we've had our own surprises in politics over the past few years as well. So uh, we, you know, we've got quite a lot of common in that respect. Yeah, but remember, as Trump pointed out yesterday to the UN, his administration has done more for the US than any administration in history. I mean, granted, that was just before the entire UN laughed at him, but <laughs> yeah, he did point that out. I, I mean, he's a great stand-up, so he always has. <laughs> no, that was crazy. And then he tried to pretend it was a joke, but it's like, what? That makes no sense. Like, his biggest fear is being laughed at. So I hope that, like, this book enrages him. Oh, I mean, for, for all of us, because obviously you, we've done this interview, you are the authors of the book, in the event Trump goes tits about this book it will do us wonders I mean across the board so I've, I very much would also like that to happen because uh, you know that it's good for it's good for our publicity it's good for your publicity like yeah I hope it goes yeah, we should we should we should try and we should try and make sure that Trump sees this book and tweets about it yeah. send them a fucking copy to the White House we should I'd really rather, do that I'd rather get the attention of Donald Trump Jr uh because I want, I do. As, as if I've got his ear, I want to tell him to get plastic surgery. What? <laughs> so ugly. Junior? Is, yeah, Junior. There's no excuse for him to look like that if he has that much money. Apparently, Eric he is he way uglier. Well, they're both ugly, but I think uh, I'd love to get that. You know, if you, he's the one I'd want to change his face the most. <laughs> I didn't know this. I mean, I, I think, they do have what? a Beavis and Butthead thing going. Like they do look like Beavis yeah. and Butthead. They pay them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> they really do. No, I think if Trump tweeted at us, it would be amazing for book sales, and then we would get like a bunch of like Alex Jones conspiracy theorists like digging into our lives and ruining it. But that might be a good trade off if we got money, you know? So I'll consider it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it depends. Like, there's only you can only have done so bad in your life so far. So you know, it's like you can't have done that bad in the grand scheme of things. No, Matt and I have done pretty terrible things. <laughs> yeah. Done well. Pretty well pretty <laughs> We won't go into it. I promise that. I promise we won't send them the P video so they can use it against you. No, we need you to because that's good publicity. <laughs> All right. Okay. Not, okay. Fine. P video, good publicity. 
digging up in your past bad bad publicity. I'm just I'm just making a flow chart here just so I know where to where to look at. Julia has a dark past by the sound of things. Very dark, very dark past. Very dark past. I used to do stand up comedy in college, so it's a very dark past. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, worse than working as a stripper at college. <laughs> being, being a stand up comedian. Yeah. It's much more yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if if our, our listeners are probably going to want to to go and, and find you guys on social media and stuff, where where can they where can they find out about the museum? Where can they find out about your other work? Where can they, they find out about your stand up? Um, for me, Julia, you can go to my website, which is juliabyoung dot com, and my Instagram and Twitter are both okay Julia, which is just how I feel about myself. Okay. <laughs> um, you can, I'm on Twitter, Matt Harkins with a Z. Uh, and Instagram, and then the museum is thnk1994.com, and that's on Instagram too. Uh, and uh, you can check out anything that's going on there for sure. Yeah, and you guys better follow us. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're going to be following you guys. We, we already do. We we heard we had to interview you guys, so we obviously we're going to follow you and try and like you know dig up some dirt. But unfortunately, we couldn't find anything. Oh. Oh. We'll slide into our DMs and we'll send you some things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just just so we've got some just so we've got some trash on each other yeah 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 no, yeah. that's the only way that you can trust people and media as long as you all have trash on each other then it's safe yeah yeah you need to have a bit of leverage that's good then we have a bit, then we can start a business yeah yeah <laughs> exactly exactly so have you got anything else to plug have you got anything else in the works at the present moment other than the book i mean is there any installments coming in in the uh, museum? Have you got any more writing, Julia, and the works? Uh, anything that you're allowed to talk about? Anything that's coming up? Yeah, totally. We're, the museum's doing a, another pop-up. Uh, it's a solo show of actually Laura Collins' work, uh, who's the illustrator for this book. Um, and the show is called Anna Wintour Double-Crossing Her Legs. It's all tall, <laughs> size paintings of Anna Wintour doing a double cross on her legs. And that'll be opening in New York uh, on November 9th if you're around or want to come. But you can see the pieces on the website too. Yeah. And we have, um, we're going to have like a book launch party on November 7th in Brooklyn. You guys are invited, obviously. Um, we'll have mattresses set up for all the guests. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mattresses fucking everywhere. Yeah. It's at a mattress store. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's such a cool idea. It actually is. Yeah. We should do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll be reading, doing some readings from the books, selling books, and um, just, you know, telling our friends to support us, basically. Yeah. It'll be fun. Cool. Well, when the uh, when the books when the books release, we'll be sure to, uh, you know share the links out and stuff, and, and make sure our, our listeners can grab a copy. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been great talking to you guys. We'll 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 maybe we'll maybe try and uh, and get you on again in the future, like after the midterms or something, and see if all your if your predictions came true. Yes, I mean it's going to be really difficult for us, Jerry, because by that point there'll be millionaires with the amount of books that they've sold, and then the amount of books that the racist have bought to burn, which is even larger sales. We knew them before they were rich. Like we were friends before they were yeah. rich, so they're not going to forget about it. We would us. do a pity podcast for you when we're rich. <laughs> sure. I, I, I would be okay with that. I would be okay with that. <laughs> it's my favourite kind of podcast. Yeah. That's the only podcast that I do with Jerry. <laughs> We've been doing this for ages. <laughs> it's the only podcast. It's the only podcast I can masturbate to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, right. Well, on that on that on that bombshell, then uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks for for coming on the show, and it's been great talking to you guys. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for having you us. You too. It's so nice to meet you.